Ah, here we go. Still not. Ah. All right. Sorry. Don't know what happened there. Let me make sure that I didn't accidentally. What is logic? Okay. Weird. Um, let me make sure that I didn't accidentally start something here that can't be finished. Videos. Live. Okay, we're good. All right, Let's see. we got three viewers, is that right? Five viewers, hey, Dennis is first. Hey, Dennis, you're with us for a change. At the actual time, okay, so I'm gonna go back to playing now. If I get my, so just A7 to D7, very simple chord progression. Yeah, we'll see what happens today. Okay, I gotta turn off the music. Annoying, annoying jam. Uh, Monday was a little bit slow. I think ultimately we ended up with a peak of uh, 32, which isn't bad. Um, the crazy thing is I had six new subscribers, which was good. That's it used to be that way when I first started doing this. I get a lot of new subscribers, but then lately it's been zero, zero, zero every day. So. <laughs> Easy, what's going on? Good to see you, Bob, Jim, Dennis, Bruce. Yeah, Bruce, I got your message about the uh, the phone people. Uh, yeah, no, this I'm, I'm pretty happy with my setup. I may get a couple more panels at some point. Um, there's a wall over here that has nothing on it, um, and I was trying to decide. I was going to put pictures up, maybe, just give the studio some uh, a touch of uh, finished look. This studio is just for me. So it's not like I have people coming here. I mean, occasionally Kelly comes over and we write some music together, but for the most part, uh, and then I may have a producer over this week to, to um, uh, when I track electrics for a record, but, um, but most of the time I'm working by myself. So I don't really need to have aesthetics going on, but it is nice. I, I wanted to do maybe some like eight framed photographs, like black and white photographs of our trips to Europe uh, different, you know, whatever my favorite photograph was from each trip and then make it a black and white photo and put it up like an eight by 10 or something. I thought that be, might be kind of cool. Uh, the problem is that it would be glass and it would be reflective. And, uh, so it may be counterintuitive. The other thing I thought I could hang a bunch more guitars up there, um, or put more panels up. So, and I can get, I could get an image put on a panel, but I don't really want to do that. I don't, I think that looks cheesy. Um, the company that I got these panels from, they actually do have, you can take a photograph and put it on a panel. The problem is I, I got gray panels because I, I know that, you know, I've seen white ones or tan ones or what, they just get dirty after time. And this, these, I can, I can dust them down and they're okay. They'll last me 10 years before I have to replace them because they start looking nasty. So, um, anyway, but I appreciate the, the recommend on that. Um, if I were recording real amps in here or something, I might have to pat it down more, but mostly it's, everything's direct and then I'm doing acoustics and it's... Did anybody watch that video? Yeah, we got, we got orange skies too, Bonnie. We're all, uh, we're all smoked out here. 
it was a lot worse last year because we actually had a fire on the hill behind our house. So that made it, we had like a, a week of, of complete um, just smoke everywhere. In fact, it's funny because I have a vague recollection of the people at Starbucks wearing masks when we went in there a year ago. And, and I think that Starbucks made them wear them to stay open. Like they wanted to close, but, you know, of course, then that would be a drag. So they stayed open. Um, so, yeah. So, I mean, that was a, the, the, the video I, I dropped yesterday. It was a little bit more of an inside baseball kind of thing. Uh, it's a little bit more like inside my world. Um, I put it under pro guitar secrets rather than easy beginner guitar, that kind of thing. I mean, so I don't think anyone asked me the signal path cost. Um, if you exclude the speakers and the computer, just the getting to the computer. I mean, the microphones, I think 1600 and the, the, uh, the lunchbox is like 500. The preamp is a thousand. So you're looking at 3000 there plus another 600 for the duet, six or 700 for the duet. Um, and that's, that's a fairly expensive signal path. Um, for me, it's, it's justified and a write-off. Um, but it's, um, uh, definitely, um, yeah, it's definitely gonna, it's definitely going to, uh, you know, change over years. And, and uh, right now I'm digging it. I'm digging my signal path. So, and I get no complaints. <laughs> That's the key. I remember when, um, back in the eighties, you know, late, late eighties, early nineties, I was putting together my rack system because everybody was using racks and everything. And boy, I tell you. You get into a session and it's humming, you know, engineers hate that. And I was a Strat guy, so it's hard to get, get Strats not to hum. And uh, so it would be it would be painful. And um, so I would do all sorts of things. I had all sorts of tricks to get rid of the hum. And that's why when the Lexicon system came out and it had the preamp and the amp and the, um, all of the effects, like 73 different effects, all programmable um, and saveable, um, in playlists and everything. When that came out in the mid nineties and I got that, it was literally two units doing the job of what I had, like, I don't know, 16 rack spaces of stuff. Um, and it very, very heavy. And it not only did it replace it, it sounds so much better. And because it was such a simple system, there was no hum to chase. It was all built up, you know, so that was, um, yeah. So updating can be a good thing, but I'm still using that rig. It's been, 25, 25 years I've been using that rig for live stuff. And every time I show up with it, people are like, Lexicon. Even the cabinet, the speaker's Lexicon. And people are like, what the heck? And I'm like, yeah. And then I play and they're like, oh my gosh, how much are those? <laughs> so, but the same thing's too with the signal path. And, and the reason, I don't know if you noticed that there were two uh, 512s, two APIs. I'm actually going to give one to Alex. Um to use because um, he needs a good mic pre, but uh, that was because back in the day when I first started record, when I first got the lunchbox, I was recording my rig and that was stereo. I never use my rig to record anymore. I just go ahead and use uh, the plugins. So, okay, we got a bunch more people joining in here. John's here, uh, Louisville. No fires here, just crazies going nuts. That's <laughs> all oh, I know. You got to stay with, and that's that's true. I would have been right down in the thick of it uh, because they the the uh, Muhammad Ali Humanitarian Awards are usually in one of those big hotels downtown within walking distance of uh, Muhammad Ali Center. And they are the greatest people. I love them so much. They are so sweet to us and uh, they really treat us right and they just enjoy having us out there. I think it's really fun. And I'm really bummed I'm not doing that. But yeah, the hotel is like right down there. So I'm, I'm in some ways glad I'm not, I'm not going to be there. So um, yeah, let's see. Yeah, we, we have unhealthy, too, air right now. Um, oh, Gary. Oh, Gary. Yes, Gary. I moved back to, uh, you know, I could add that. Um, let's see. Text. A new time. Okay, and I'll just leave this here. 
I love how it flips upside down. Like, who would want to do that? Okay. Oh, oops, wrong thing. That looks pretty good. Probably hit my head on it or something at some point. Um, so the fires aren't near you, Bonnie. They're not close to you. Uh, we were never really in any danger. It would literally have to burn hundreds and hundreds of homes before it got to ours. We're not like up against the hills. We looked at a couple houses and actually we're an escrow on a house that was in the hills. And that was probably around two years ago, we were in escrow and we pulled out. Um, and not for this reason, for other reason, um, it needed a new septic system. It was going to cost 130,000. And I was like, nope. Um, and so I, uh, um, we didn't buy that house. We pulled out of escrow. And if we had bought that house, we would have been evacuated three times already. So, um, okay. All right, cool. All right. So I'm going to sign my contract probably today with Universal Music Group publishing deal. Um, and, uh, let's see, um, Hey, Vito, what's going on, man? I saw you on the lot on the, on the, on the premiere. Let's see any way to prevent his sound from occurring when I'm recording my son's grand piano music. I'm running dynamic mic over the piano through a focus, right? Interface and into a camcorder. Yeah, there could be some issue there. I, YouTube is a great source for that kind of information. I'm going to move this. Um, because uh, um, they, uh, you know, people have the same problem and then they solve it or, or it's a question somebody gets. It, um, what you might do, for one thing, a dynamic mic is not the best kind of mic. A condenser mic is better. You can get a decent, you, you can get a, not a decent, but a, an okay de uh, Condem uh, condenser mic for about a hundred bucks. So you don't have to. Um, and the other thing would be nice is have a stereo in that situation too. Um, but it, it camcorder, so focus right, digital audio interface. See, that's weird. You should be able to go directly into a camcorder if you have a certain kind of mic connector. It should be an eighth inch tip ring sleeve connector or something like that. TRS, which is, uh, it's got three conductors on it. Like a guitar cable is two conductor. See, it has a tip and a sleeve. Um, there would be another black circle here, which creates a, a ring. And so if you tip ring sleeve uh, for like a, a, a three conductor, which would be required to do stereo, I think. Um, yeah, or 3.5 millimeter, which is almost the same as an eighth inch, I think. Um, so let's see. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> that's not my area of expertise. So we're going to talk, we're going to talk about slide today. Uh, we'll probably talk about this for a couple days or maybe more. I don't know. Um, and uh, also, you know, anything you can do, uh, if you uh, like my videos, feel free to post them. Um, particularly if you go through a video, I, I just noticed I have, as of yesterday, I have 585 videos. Now, keep in mind, we're at video day number 109 for live stream. And I probably did 10 live streams for that. So I probably have 120 live streams. So I don't really count those as videos uh, because they weren't really thought. <laughs> I'm not thinking out. I'm not thinking anything when I do these. Whereas when I actually produce a video, I've got a concept or something, you know. And a lot of those videos are jam tracks, too. Yeah, I mean, you may have to wear your mask in the house, Bonnie. Um but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's San Francisco or the Bay Area has been awful, too. Really bad air quality. Um, so, sorry, I had breakfast and got something in my teeth. Mixed for good TV, doesn't it? You never see newscasters do that, right? I feel like my dad. My dad would always be picking at his teeth. Must be a dad thing. Ah, got it. Yay. I don't know what that was. It looked like some kind of herb. And I guarantee you, they didn't put herbs in my uh, <laughs> McMuffin. So I probably don't want to know what that is. Okay, so we're going to talk about slides. And um, uh, slides go way back. I'm sure slide probably goes back hundreds of years. But 
um, and I'm not a, an, a slide aficionado. RJ um, Ronquillo, I think you say, is how you say his name. I should know because we're friends, but I don't. I touch my face, so let's take a drink. If I touch my face, that's a, 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 um, a, a sip. That's one of our drinking game rules. Um, there's a lot of things. If I change guitars, if I refer to myself in the third person, if I use air quotes, that doesn't count. If I drop a pick, that's a sip. If I drop a thumb pick, that's two sips. What did I say the other day? There was one. Oh, I, well, I had a total mistake on like sitting up there the whole time I had, a, a, I did a diagram completely wrong. Uh, Phantom Power uh, for a mic and a mixer. Phantom Power, Phantom Power, Phantom Power. Uh, no, uh, generally, I think you can plug a, a condenser mic directly into, yes, it needs not fan. Well, maybe Phantom Power, but it, I think, you, what did you say? You had a focus right? The focus right should be able to handle that. It, it, it would send, I think it's 48 volts or something like that. Um, uh, yeah, so I, yeah, I don't have a, a um, uh, Phantom Power for, you know, it's the, the, the Apogee does it. Or, you know, maybe even, uh, no, actually, okay, the, my mic pre does it. Um, yeah, I got 48 volt on right now. So if I turn that off. But I didn't, before I had a lunchbox, I just went directly into um, the Duet, and it provided 48 volts. So um, that, in other words, you, uh, excuse me, um, you don't, I don't think, I think the focus right provides it. Look up, uh, yeah, my lunchbox does it for me, but, but I, I, again, I don't, I didn't, I didn't use a lunchbox most of my time I was recording. Uh, I didn't get that until probably five or six years ago. So uh, before that, I was just going direct. Now, the Model 1 that I used, the Groove Tube Model 1 came with a power supply because it's a tube mic. That's a different thing. Um, and then I would plug that directly into Duet. But I, I'm pretty sure I just plugged um, my 451 AKG, right, which is also a condenser mic, in directly into my Duet, which would be the same as plugging into your focus rig. Um, I, I'm not even sure. Uh, Robert Johnson, did he play slide? I can't remember. I think he was more fingerstyle, but yeah, you may have played. I don't know. But there were guys that played, you know, with a knife. I don't have a knife, but probably like a, a switchblade or a pen knife or something like that. They would play with maybe the back of the knife because it's hard metal, chromed metal. Um, and then, then players started using like pieces of glass, like the two most common kind of pre-manufactured slides would probably be the, the Corsican bottle, pill bottle, and uh, the wine bottle top. And so these are both, you know, for all, you know, this may actually be the top of a wine bottle. I don't know. Um, and you can see where, <laughs> who was it was asking me about breaking. See, I, I chipped it and because it was in my soft case and somebody put something on top of it and it cracked. Uh, so I don't really like to use this one too much anymore. I, I'm like, it's, it's pretty heavy. Um, so I'm not sure if it was actually manufactured to look like a wine bottle. That's very likely. Or if they actually do recycle wine bottles and turn them into slides. Uh, that's also likely, you know, uh, these are actually manufactured. These are not original core seed. In fact, it's got a sticker on it. It says blues bottle. I'm not sure. I think this may be Dunlop. I can't remember. I think these are all Dunlop slides. So these are glass slides of various lengths and thicknesses. Um, I've got basically all three here, or three different si sizes. They're all the same. Like If I line them up this way, they're all the identical, uh, but you can see they're three different lengths. So we got baby, mama, and papa. So we could put on an episode of the three bears with three slides. I mean the three. Yeah, the three bears. Yeah. So Goldilocks and the three bears. See, I totally forgot how that story was told. My gardener's here now. Um, uh, no, actually, let's see. Could fall un under touching his face. <laughs> All right, let's see. 47 volt. Yeah, exactly. You just need 47. Close enough. All right, so we all have to take a sip because the gardener's here, which would be every Wednesday. Um but yeah, so people started using slot things like this for slides, and probably happened for a very long time. This is what Dwayne Allman used is was Corsine bottles. 
um, and pill bottles. And um, you can't you can't fault that. I love the tone of this. Um, Yeah, I like the tone of that. Um, and then the, um, the, the, the wine bottle one, it's a little tight. I'm, I guess I've gained weight, so I'm a little hesitant to put it all the way on. Hard to hear, I'm sure, over the internet through the microphone on the, you know, I'm used to using the, the microphone on the iMac. Um, pretty hard to hear there, but. It's a darker tone, though, which makes sense. It's a, thick, a thicker bottle. It's also a darker color, but I don't think the color makes any difference. Uh, but yeah, so this is a, a thinner, brighter sound. Um, and it's interesting because Dwayne Allman typically, and I touched my face, so let's take a sip. It was hilarious, too, when I was, we were flying this past weekend on Southwest. All airlines, pretty much, you know, they're still giving you food and drink. Well, what do you have to do to drink, you know, what do you have to do to drink or eat? You have to take your mask off. I said, oh, it's okay to take your mask off if you're eating. Of course, I made the, the nuts last like an hour. But everybody was doing that, right? It's kind of like, well, then, what's the, it, either it's like, and, and airplanes are going to be the primary a very, very good way to transmit the disease. I mean, I, the, part of the reason why it spread so fast in New York, it, if you're sitting next to someone who has it for 20 minutes, that's a very likely, you know, the, the restaurant scenarios, the the, uh, uh, the indoor restaurants with bad ventilation, people sitting in there, the fans blowing, I get that. And I, I've seen, I've heard stories of lots of people. The, the elderly choir at that one church where they were practicing for two hours, standing next to each other, that's, you know. And so a plane is a perfect storm for that. <laughs> yet they still say you can take your mask off it's funny that should be the one place where they, you whatever you do you cannot take your mask off and like i said everybody was like yeah i'm eating, I'm eating my i'm eating my uh chips and i'm i'm uh, drinking my water very very slowly so uh yeah i i've never i don't have a bone i guess you could use bone i mean there's ceramic i don't have a ceramic slide um, now, I just bought this one, and I really like it. I think I'm going to try to make it my... This one's a, called... A, I think it's called a Preacher's Pipe. Uh, let me see if I can find it. I'll post the link, Amazon link, because I just bought it. I'm just kind of messing around with it. I kind of like it. Um, and the reason I got it is because, like I said, if I put this in my soft gig bag, if I put this in my soft gig bag, it'll break. In fact, this is not the first one I've bought. And that's dangerous because then you reach in to grab a pick or a, a whammy bar or something like that, and you cut your finger on a broken slide. That's not good. Uh, cause you're at a gig. So I won't put these in. I've got a special one that I've been using, but this is to replace the special one that I've been using for years and years and years and years and years. And I'm going to tell you that in a second. Okay. So let me see if I enter preacher's pipe. Not what it was called. Uh, no, I guess not. Brass. Where is it? Where are you? Ah, here it is. Preaching pipe. Okay, I was so close. All right, so here, yeah, it's got 108 ratings, uh, four and a half stars. So it's, it is it is 1862. It's not cheap. Uh, but you, it should never break. So here is that link. Uh, question from John regarding metal versus glass you know, size. Yeah. So, um, oh, wow, 37. Wow, this is awesome. Okay. Um, I feel like the, the tone difference, and I don't know how that well it translates, but let me just play a lick, you know, like, uh, I'll just do like an E thing. Now, notice, I'm on my neck pickup. I just love the sound of that, but I can go bridge. A little more nasally, a little bit more rock and roll, maybe a little more country, some more blues, more hollow sounding. Okay, so there's the, and we got the 
Gardner here, but um, so there's the metal. And there's the glass. It's a little quieter. Uh, it's a little thinner, I think, maybe a little thinner, but this, but the metal makes it... Really, I think the main thing is, uh, tone is a part, a component, but it's mostly comf comfort for your finger. Um, and my favorite slide, I didn't have it very long. I was doing a TV show in 1991 called American Detective, and my one of my best friends, Jim Cavell, was the uh, composer. And... Um, it was really fun. I mean, I was nervous as all get out. I mean, I, 91, I should have been, at 30 years old, I shouldn't have been nervous, but I hadn't done a lot of sessions, and, and I hadn't done any major TV sessions. And this was like on ABC TV or Fox or something, so it was on a major, you know, primetime show. And um, I got called, oh, by the way, I have a story. I'm just bummed that Diane's not going to be here. I may have to just do a separate story time. Uh, but I have a jury duty story if I have time to do it. And I am working on um, that uh, Latin record this today, but I don't, my session's not till three o'clock. So, um, so I don't have, I don't have a back end today, but um, so I was working on this TV show called American Detective and I was kind of hired a second guitar. Um, and it was cool because every week um, I had, the, the chair for first guitar was pretty much rotating. It was someone different every week. So, one week it was George Deering, then it was Dean Parks, then it was um, Grant Geisman, and then Michael Thompson. Uh, it was um, it was awesome. Um, and we were in our own rooms, but we were hanging out. And I was listening, and I had headphones on, and so you know I could hear. Them. But I had my amp, and they had their amp, and we were playing acoustics and electrics and everything. So it was you know pretty cool. Um, and it was all reading, a lot of reading, but very very short, mostly cues like. Some of the cues were two bars long or something, you know, just like a little bumper going to commercial. Uh, some of the cues were 10 bars long and some of the cues were 30 bars long, but that was probably the longest. 30 bars would be the longest. And so I, I had a slide and Dean Parks was doing a session. I was a huge Dean Parks fan. Played on a lot of Steely Dan records and everything, you know, guys, million TV shows and movies and things like that. So he, um, Dean's, uh, I'm there early, of course, the nerd. I'm doing my own cartage. Cartage is carrying, setting up the gear and everything. I'm doing that. The, the top guys like Dean had the cartage companies that would come and set up their, their rigs. Like Dean had two racks, like this tall, uh, you know, like 30 space racks. He had two of those plus amps and cabinets. And I didn't have anything near that. Um, and he, uh, uh, the, whoever set up his rig plugged something in wrong and fried the whole system, basically fried the pedal board, which controlled the whole system. So he was, he didn't have anything to, he couldn't use any of his effects, but they had a, a Mesa Boogie 112 at, at, at amp there, and he used that in his guitars, and he sounded amazing, it's 335, and he borrowed my slide, and I had this slide, and I wish I could find another one like it, but it was very tapered, uh, it was very tapered, kind of like this, but, um, and then it, it had a bulbous end on it, and my friend who gave it to me even had a, had a gel inside of it, uh, a, a a light gel, you know, the red, blue, green, you know, like if you want to do like uh, old lights. For some reason, he put that in there. I don't know why, uh, maybe to make it a little tighter or something, but he curled it up and put it in there. And I left it in there. Um, and so Dean barred it, and I didn't get it back. And I ran into him later, years, years later, just recently. But, and I asked him, if he remembered it. He goes, oh, yeah, I love that slide. I said, oh, that's fine. You can keep it. I'm still trying to find another one. He goes, you're still trying to find it. It had been 25 years. He goes, you're still trying to find another one. I said, yeah. Uh, but anyway, that's, yeah, so um, the size, yeah, that's when, now, some guys like a short, a small slide like this. Um, I mean, I, I can't finger. Alex has a little one that he uses. Um, some guys use a small one on their ring finger instead of on their pinky. Um, a small metal one, Alex has that, and he can do slide and then still play. And that's great. I mean, I think that's a good way to go. There's this one here, which I should probably replace... That's how this one's supposed to be used. See, this is only half a slide. And you can see the hole here. It comes with a, these fillers, but I, haven't, I don't want to break a nail trying to pop this thing out. But it's too small. I mean, it's too big. Okay. But the idea is that you can still play. And then 
and somehow magically get the slide to go to your computer. And then magically get the slide to spin off of your fingers. <laughs> it should, now it does, if this is tight, it still rotates. See, I'm holding the thing in the middle, the black thing, I'm holding the sleeve or whatever, and it spins. So if it's super tight, it, it will spin on, on that. So it spins easy no matter what. Um, but right now it's not very tight, but I'm not sure. I, I, I'm sure that if you use this regularly, you would develop a technique where you could you would spin it around quickly with your thumb and get it to play. Okay, so that's another one you could do. I'm, I think I may have put a link for this one uh, on my. I'll, I'll add some links to the to the bottom of things. Um, now the the solid slides you wouldn't really use on plain upright. Okay, so like this would be too cumbersome to use a to use a slot, solid slide. If I were playing down like this, now this is too. You can't see it. But on lap steel, I might use that one. My favorite is uh, for that. Uh, see, I've got a bunch of them. It's so funny. I ended up with some. Well, anytime I buy any kind of slide, it sometimes comes with this. This one's called a lap dog. And it's not bad. Um, you can see that. It says lap dog right there. Um, not bad. I mean, it's got nice, it's got nice, like, cutouts here. So you've got all sorts of finger options, you know. So you can, however you want to put your fingers, it'll work. Um, the one I mainly use, I don't see. We even got this piece of metal like this. It's kind of, this makes more noise. It's very, it's not chromed. So it's just a, probably that's aluminum. It seems pretty heavy for aluminum. Um, but it, it, it's got much more of a texture to it, which gives it a nastier sound, which I kind of like. Uh, uh, let's see. See, here's some. See, that one slide comes with a bunch of different sleeves. So what you want to do is you want to find out the sleeve that's the best, probably that one, but that's really tight, makes me nervous. Like I'll never be able to get it off again. Um, but this one probably is the best one. So then what I would do is pop out this and then put this one in there and then it would be good to go. Uh, let's see, I'm sorry, I'm probably missing questions out the wazoo. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. Well, no, I understand. No worries. Uh, let's see. Got let's see, Gary's on vacation. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, Bonnie, John, you know when would I use pinky? I, I would never use ring finger. I always use pinky. So for me, that's just the way I like to do it. Um, what you might do is just look at, like, who's, do you have a favorite slide guy? What does he do? But I don't have one favorite slide guy. I mean, Dwayne Allman's a big one. I'll tell you, one of my, truly one of my favorites, though. Um, in fact, if I, well, we'll talk about some of this stuff later. Okay, we're going to do more than one lesson. This is a very thin one. This is like a super cheap one. Uh, very thin glass. It's just not going to sound very good. It's also going to be tight on my pinky bit. <laughs> It's okay. Uh, it's a, it doesn't, the problem with the thinner glass, okay, is it doesn't sustain as long. Now, I don't know if I can get it to do this, but. Like, I can't, like, if I start from no pluck, it barely does something. I think with these, like the preacher's pipe, I think it's going to probably. Yeah, I can. And vibrato is key. It seems like it has a little more sustain with a with a metal or a thicker thing. Now, here's a cool thing. You you may not if you don't have a slide, you may have one of these, especially if you're into mechanic cars and stuff. This, I, I've used this for many, 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 many years. Uh, this is my, I usually have this in my um, gig bag because it can't, you can't break it. It's a, it's a Craftsman 11 16 socket for basically one, you know, you can use it for lots of things that are taking out. It's often used to take out spark plugs. Uh, the thing I liked about this was, um, well, for one thing, my, one of my favorite, favorite uh, slide players, I saw him use it 
could use one is Sonny Landreth. Um, Sonny Landreth uses it, and he is amazing. And then I saw, I noticed that he changed recently, but he was using it for years, and so that's why I bought it. And then the thing I liked about it was, for one thing, you can custom size it. So like this is 11 16 If 11 16 doesn't work for you, then you could go with maybe three quarters. If your pinky's bigger or if your pinky's smaller, you could maybe go to what would be a five eighths. Um, and you could experiment and you could try them because I think the way they're mounted, there's a plastic thing that sticks in here and then they hang it in the store. So you can actually take them off the shelf and put them in your finger and try them out, you know, and say, oh, okay. And the other thing is it's nice because it's, because there's the, this part here, there's a little bit more mass at the, at the tip of the slide, which is where your heavier strings are. solid problem with it the biggest problem is that it's very very heavy and I can really kind of start to feel it in my muscles here and the tendons here if I play a lot of slide in the show or on a session so that's kind of why I got the preaching pipe because I it's a lot lighter I mean gosh it's yep yeah well, now that I think about it it's about the it's about the same weight but the, the, the thing about it, it doesn't feel as heavy because it's not resting on, that's the other thing, it may be something to do with the fact that there's that weight and it's resting on the tip of your finger, You're pushing it down like that. Um, but, you know, I still will use this. Uh, this would have that same issue, but, well, not really, because but this one is very, very light in compared to the to the preaching pipe. So this is the one, did I post a link I did, didn't I? No, I copied it. Yeah, this link. So you can check that out. Um, so, you know, and you can use, I mean, I've used mic stands for slide. I've used microphones for slide. Um, I've gone over the top with a beer bottle. You know, I've used beer bottles for slides. Uh, in, a, in a gig, you know, you can, I'm, you're just having, you're putting on a show. You're an entertainer. So, you know, I could use, the, there won't be a quiz on this for slide. <laughs> Okay, so, <laughs> so I mean, this is ceramic. In fact, uh, this is probably ceramic, right? Um, there are ceramic slides out there. I don't know about bone slides. I, I probably is. This one also, I showed you this one. This this is just a saxophone cover, and I'm sure I use this. I know where this is from. This is this is from Malachi days, and. Um, uh, Danny let me use it for a slide and let me keep it. But it's very, very thin. So again, the, the sustain issue, it almost disappears immediately. Plus it's almost a little sharp right here. So I, you know, this is very tender skin down here. You really don't want to be risking it. So, um, yes, that's exactly right, BK. Um, they, Basically, the this one here is not an actual Coruscant pill bottle. It's a copy of one. In fact, you can find them, but I bet you they're not cheap. Um, vintage Coruscant pill bottles. Some guys, you know, have to have the vintage one. They can. They say, "Oh, I can tell the difference." I, 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 there's no way I'd be able to tell the difference. But yes. Yeah, so this, even though this is a new slide, this is the kind of thing that they would have used back in the day because they didn't make slides. Nobody was manufacturing them. Um, and the same thing with the wine bottle. Okay, the, that was very common. Now this one, again, I don't know if this was manufactured. It probably was, but, um, or did they actually recycle wine bottles? I mean, why not, right? Um, and they could take the rest of the glass from the wine bottle and recycle that and get money for that. The Pritchin pipe is definitely manufact uh, manufactured uh, for slide. You can see it's slightly tapered, which is cool. All right, makes it comfortable. I don't know... When I saw Sonny Landreth using a, a, a craftsman, and the great thing about this is if it ever breaks, you they'll replace it for free. And the thing is, how much was this? What did I say, 1862 or something like that? 
I mean, I think there was a time where I could get these for $3. I don't think they're $3 anymore. They may be $7. But still, that's a lot cheaper um, and completely customizable. And you can try it before you buy it. And it comes with a lifetime warranty. Uh, whereas this, you order it and you go, oh, yeah, that's okay. I don't like it. Um, so now you've wasted 20 bucks. Um, but uh, yeah, and I, you know, I would recommend getting something like this. I can, I'll, let me find this one uh, real quick. I think it's uh, um, Blues. It's called Blues Bottle. Let me see how much these are. Yeah, you can't. Wait. Oh, heavy wall. Okay, weird. Small. Oh, because see, they have different sizes, but it makes it a little tough. So I, I see. I'm gonna send you the cheap. I'm gonna post the cheap one. It's got a 200 reviews. So um, this may be. But you can get different thicknesses of glass, and they're more expensive if they're thicker. And you can also get um, different sizes. So the opening would be different. Maybe the length would be different, and that might fit your finger better. Um, yeah, exactly. Total sales pitch for the craftsman. I mean, let me look up a craftsman right now and see what they go for. Now this one here, this is only, it's under seven bucks, this one on, but then there's another one when I, on the exact same thing for $18.35 and $12.99, but they're different. Oh, Derek Trucks signature, because Derek Trucks, who's a big um, uh, fan of Oh, and they have a blue one too. That's kind of cool. But that's $21. And then they have a yellow one, which is dope. Yeah. I mean, it's it's kind of totally one of those things. Here's a Planet Waves one. It's a total one of those things where you could totally get into it and really start to notice the differences um, uh, between them, you know. And, and they're just fun. I mean, I, you know, the blue one would be kind of cool to see on your finger, the yellow one too. Um, so let's see. Okay. Oh, hey, power has been restored. I keep getting these texts from the uh, California saying the power was out three hours ago in your neighborhood. Not in my neighborhood. All right. So, um, let me see. What was the other one I was going to look up? Uh, oh, the crash. Eleven sixteenths. Socket, right? Deep socket. Yeah, Here, this is pretty much it, I think. Oh, wow, they put the, le you know, that's really smart. They made the 11 sixteenths really large. T it tells you the aging of the population. It's pretty It's pretty good size here, but uh, they made it really large. I, I could totally see myself in my garage trying to find, you know, the right socket. So, uh, but here's a long one for 548, okay? Uh, But I, what I would do is I would go to Sears or to a hardware store that sells their stuff. And, um, oh, you know, did I forget to post one? Oh, no, I guess not. Here we go. Um, there's the Sears one. But I would go to a hardware store that has these. And, you, you know, like I said, the way they typically display these individually, like you can buy a whole set of them, of course. But the way they typically display them is with a plastic thing that sits inside there and it hangs. So you can take them all out and kind of go and feel them. And, and people will be looking at you like... In fact, it exactly happened when I was doing. I was like, I was doing this, and I was going like this, and people were like, "What is going on with this dude?" You know, I should have put one on every finger and just going. Rah, rah, rah. <laughs> so, um, so like today, mainly what we're talking about is the slides themselves. But I'm going to get into a little bit of technique here. Um, one thing I would want you to practice is. Uh, Plane, we're going to practice playing, and I'm going to probably use this. I don't know if you have a slide. So this is, my hope is that by Friday, you guys all have slides. Um, I may not be able to do this. Well, no, it'll, at 9, I should be fine. I think I'm going to be working records. So it may be a shorter lesson on Friday uh, because um, I, I've, I think I'm working on that album, that Latin record, today and Friday. And then tomorrow, I've got to work on a, an industrial you know, industrials are like videos they play at conventions and stuff like that. So, oh, heck yeah. Are you kidding? Slide is originally played on acoustic. Slide predates electric guitar. Yeah. In fact, I, 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 I love slide on acoustic. Um, and I've got my Dobro too, so we can talk about that. We, we can talk about a lot of different aspects of the slide. But what I want you to try to do, 
basically when I'm playing slide, and, and I, I want to go slow here so you can kind of get a sense of it, but I'm really, I'm trying to mute every string. So you can even just practice putting your hand on the guitar. And so I'm, I'm basically got my three fingers on the top three strings like this. And I'm just sitting them on them like that so that nothing, they don't make a sound. And I'm kind of putting my thumb on the bottom three strings down here. But basically resting it on the fourth string. I mean, I might play slide on the bottom string or the bottom, you know. I might, I might play down there. But here's the, the thing about slide is it can be very, very noisy if you're not taking care of things. Now, remember I talked about that American Detective show. One of the best moments of my life was... <laughs> When I uh, was, every show took place in a different city. Um, and we were doing um, New Orleans. No, it wasn't New Orleans. It was in the South somewhere. And I brought my lap, lap steel. And um, so I was there early, like I said, because I had to set up my own gear. And of course, the, the pro guys, they would just show, the gear would be there. The session was at 11. Uh, the gear would be there. They'd show up at 5 to 11. I'd show up at 9.30 to set up and make sure everything worked. Uh, and I was nervous and I wanted to look at the charts and kind of get a heads up and, you know, get comfortable. Uh, but they would show up at 11, do three hours and take off. And then I would leave whenever I got everything packed up. Um, but I was, they were, since I was there early, the sound man said, hey, let's get sounds. So I'm playing and I'm playing my lap steel and um, uh, uh, Michael Thompson, who was the other guitar player that day. And I was really excited to work with him. And uh, Michael... I, they told me, he didn't tell me this. Well, he told me, we talked about it later. But Jim said, yeah, Michael came in there and go, are you guys listening to a Ry Cooter record? <laughs> I was like, yes. He thought I was Ry Cooter, who's a great lap steel player. So um, so that was that was the highlight of my life. I, I could have died right then and I would have been fine at 30. <laughs> oh, no, that wouldn't have been good. So... Uh, you could try a shot glass would work. Yeah, sure. A shot glass would work. Um, we'll try to, do I have any others? Yeah, I try to keep all my slides in. I wonder if you could use a harmonica. Because, see, harmonica is kind of chromey and very bluesy. And if you're in a blues band, there's probably a harmonica floating around. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's in D, so it's, I'm good. We try playing C. Now, see, it's a D harmonica, so it won't play in C. Um, okay, so funny, funny joke guitar player. So that's a harmonica. Uh, and I've actually used that on, on TV shows. Uh, let's see. Nope. Nope. What is that? That is from something. I don't know what that's from. Uh, I do not have any more slides. That's pretty much my slide collection. It's quite a few. Um, and these aren't bad. I like these. These are nice and, and uh, heavy. Um, again, the, the in the studio, the, thick, the thicker glass is going to give you a little more sustain. I mean, that's definitely true from, like, this one. if it's not sonically sustaining longer, it feels like it's sustaining longer to this really cheap thing. Yeah, it's just dying. Uh, so, uh, so that's, yeah, so those, so as far as glass versus metal, that's going to be a personal choice. I, what I would do is maybe look at, like I said, look at your favorite. If you're really, really into Derek Trucks, then you're going to be probably want one of these. And they're not, like I said, the one that I, I'm a, I don't know which one I have. That's the drag. Oh, wait, oh, I have a number on here. Okay. So, for 274, um, let's see which one it is, because maybe I'll order a, oh no, 270, so I have the thick one, this is the thick one, so yeah, I like this one a lot, I, so I wouldn't get the medium one, which is, so the thick one's a lot more expensive, um, but I, again, I feel like there's a huge difference between the thin glass and the, and they have different sizes right here, and the different sizes are different prices, so, oh weird, the small is more expensive than the large, that is so weird. No, don't need an image. Copy. 
Okay. And know that anything you buy, if you go to this Amazon link and you buy any, buy it or anything from that point, I get like a percentage. Um, so that's a good way to support the channel. I definitely use the, I prefer, yes, AJ, I definitely prefer, uh-oh, buffering. Dang it. I definitely prefer the pinky over the ring, 100%. Mainly because I want to be able to fret, like if I if I do need to play lines or something, I still have three fingers. I mean, I could play guitar without the pinky, totally fine. Maybe I would have trouble with some chords, um, but I feel like if you put the slide, and I don't want to do it because this is too small, I don't want to get stuck on my finger. That would be, make for bad TV. Um, if uh, if I were to play, it would be too disruptive. But there are some guys that like it because they want to be able to mute in front of the slide. Um, I'm not sure why. But I've seen I see a lot of guys do it. Um, let me let me pull up, see if I can find a picture of Derek um, Derek Trucks and see what finger he uses on because I you know never paid attention. All right, image. Yeah, he plays with his. Uh, he, it's on his ring. Yep. So that's his thing. And totally fine. Yeah, there he is playing with a ring. And that's a, looks like the pill bottle he's got on there. Yeah, maybe that's a regular, just all the way through whole glass thing. Uh, John Mayer, yeah, there's the pill bottle. But he definitely does on his ring finger. So, and I, you know, can't dispute, oops, just dropped a slide. So that's a sip. <laughs> Too bad Gary's not here. That is a sip. I dropped a slide. Um, so everybody take a sip. It's a drinking game. Uh, so if I, if I, uh, Touch my face, uh, which is a no-no in the COVID era. If I drop a pick, and apparently if I drop a slide, it was a glass slide. And in fact, it was my it's my pill bottle. See, I would have been bummed if that broke. So this one is, yeah, the model is seven, I don't know, so 274 on that. Um, yeah, so he he uses his ring finger, okay? And I totally, I mean, I, I I, I, he's a great player. He's a great slide player. In fact, one of the things that he did, and we, I want to talk about slide technique, and I'm not a great slide player, but one of the things he did that I noticed, it was like, that is really cool. Um, and he, he, um, so I think if I go, maybe it sounds better on the bridge. It's a total no-no. One of the, one of the things we talk, we'll talk about in slide technique is having a very light touch. Okay. You do not want to push the string down to the, that defeats the purpose of slide. If you push the string down to the fret, you're fretting. Right? Um, and so, you really, when you're playing slide, you wanna make it super obvious that you're playing slide. I mean, I, I, will, I do so much uh, music writing for car shows. Um, I write a lot of music for uh, fast and loud and for um, uh, shoot uh, what's the one oh, dang it I can't think of the main show we write for but it, fast and loud was a spin-off um, but anyway it, let's, I mean you can't have enough of that blank eating grin kind of stuff that kind of stuff and you really want to hear the slide and the nasty stuff so like if I were to do a line like this, I mean, that's great to have that perfect, that's really close to the pitch. But you wanna kind of. You know, you wanna emphasize the fact that you're sliding. But if you're pushing down to the, what's the point, right? You might as well just fret it. Uh, but what I notice Derek Trucks does and he did this when he was jamming with John Mayer, and it just blew me away. Uh, so, like, he was... He would literally push it down to fret on the top string. Uh, so, like, if he was doing... Uh, what, was, what did he do? He went, like, in G... He was pushing down and actually fretting. Sometimes I could, I could hear the frets clicking as he went up. And, you know, it, as the note going up in perfect half steps instead of this slide, this, this uh, 
portamento is what they call that on keyboard. On a synth, you have a portamento, and it's like an open octave. Uh, that's the kind of sound. Um, so uh, let's see. Uh, ba -da -ba -ba. Bimo, good to see you. Fatbo, good to see you, man. No, I, I think that may be a reason why a lot of guys uh, do it. You're right, because the – the um, so he's saying having it on the ring finger gives it a weird – because your hand fans out. So, you, you know, you don't want your slide at a diagonal like this. You want your slide straight. So I do have to kind of tuck my elbow in more when I'm playing slide. So I imagine if it's on your ring finger – and again, I don't want to push it all the way down – but you can have your elbow out more and still have to slide straight across a little bit. So – that may be uh, one of the reasons why they do it. I, I really don't know why guys, you know, it may be guys that just, they just started that way. No one told them better. Um, uh, and, um, and so, you know, that's what they do. But, you know, Derek grew up around the Almond Brothers. I think he's Butch Truck's kid. So he grew up there. So he watched. So I'm assuming, let me see. I'm, sure, I'm assuming Dwayne Almond did the same thing. Let's see. Wayne Almond. Oops, all. Yeah. All right, let's see. Yep, Dwayne Almond did the exact same. Well, or is that that may not be him? Sorry, this is somebody playing. Like, never mind. Uh, let me send a funny picture. Yeah, this is a famous picture. Yep, same thing. Yep, he's playing the exact same way, and I, that's how. I, and Butch, I mean, uh, Derek sounds a lot like Dwayne to me. So I would say that that would be his method. And again, if that's your favorite slide player, then maybe emulate that. Um, it, you know, if I had a favorite slide player, it would probably be Sonny Landreth. Let's see what he does. Um, yeah, I'm, you know, that's hard to, hard to tell on that picture. Yeah, he's got, he's got the glass slide now. He's using glass slide. It's on his pinky. He does some crazy tricky stuff, and I'm going to show you some of that. Uh, so yeah, he's got a, he's got pretty much this slide. I think it looks like something like this: open ended glass slide on his pinky. Um, and he's just he's a really cool, vibey slide player. I mean, when I knew him, he was playing. Uh, he was, like I said, when I first saw him, all these pictures have him playing glass. I'm looking for a picture where he's playing metal. But to play like Sonny, you're, you're going to have to. See, I don't know if there's a reason why Derek plays with his third finger, except maybe that it's more confidence. Um, but if you're... Uh, have I ever tried slide with a ring? Uh, no, I mean, it doesn't have enough mass. They make, Alex, like I said, has a small slide that's about probably like the half, half the size of this that he was using the other day. And it's cool, but I, I feel like the, the mass helps you with sustain. Um, so, yeah, and if you, if you, you know, got into that, I mean, this, this one would be the close, oh, I put it away. Why did I put it away? This, this one would be the closest to that kind of situation where you could take the slide and when you're not using it, you could spin around like this. Um, again, I'm not a fan of the tone of this. I feel like the again, there's not a lot of mass. Um, it's a and it's moving on me, and also it's not tight enough because I don't have the right inner sleeve on it. Um, so, so that's there's that. I mean, if I were to get to my favorites, my Favorites are probably, you know, I use this, I've used this for years, but I, this is probably now, this is the, in the studio I use this, or now I just got the, the preaching pipe and I really like the sound of it. Uh, I like the brass too. It just feels good in the hand. Nice and cool. Um, this is great. I got the small, like I said, the smaller glass, but very, very thick. Okay. Again, the thick helps with the tone. So anything that's going to be ring size, yeah, it's going to be. Really weeny sounding. Can't even get it to ring out. And you can, you know, you can. Okay, you can get it to do that kind of stuff. Uh, even a pen, a plastic pen 
uh, but it's not going to sound like a slide because it doesn't have mass and it doesn't have um, good um, uh, uh, smooth outside, you know. That, that's really part of it, too, I feel like. They have a good smooth finish on it, which is why they're often chrome, you know, polished brass. Um, this is a cool little guitar. This is a, um, I've actually got a lifter on here, you can see right there. So this is a round neck, um, but I put a lifter on there. You can get those for like three bucks. You basically just loosen the strings, slip it underneath the strings on the nut, and then retune it. And the cool thing is this has a pickup in it. Uh, but let me, uh, now this one, and I don't have uh, a fingernail right now, so it makes it kind of stinks. Uh, but this is one that I would use this kind of slide with, right? Let me get the, let me get the neck up higher for you. And this is tuned to open G. And you can see, because I'm over the top of it, I can just get one string. But I can get all, I can get all six, no problem. In most cases, I'm only getting five because I don't even use this string when I'm playing slide. I mean, I might go. I might do something like that, but basically being an open G means just the G, the bass note is on the fifth fret or fifth string. Sorry. Yeah, I changed guitars. This has a pickup in it. bend behind and I'll talk about that too but we're, we'll get to that we're I, I'm trying to spread this lesson out over several lessons uh, just because I want to go slow and just talk about the the concept now and then or the the tool now and then we'll we'll start getting into um, technique on Friday and I feel like um, I feel like slide is one of those things where I mean, most a lot of slide players know nothing about theory, okay? Uh, and you don't have to know anything about theory in your brain to know it in your ears, okay? Like, guys that don't know theory at all that are great players, um, hey, Anthony, um, they don't make mistakes. And yet you're going, well, wait, they don't, know, they don't know what they're doing. Yeah, they do. Their ear knows what they're doing, and they've been doing it for a long time. And if they know this lick works great over a D7 chord, then then they know that. I mean, that's just they know what they're doing. But I do find that having um, some good fretboard knowledge is really going to come in handy. We're going to talk about that. So um, today we talked about the tool. Okay, um, on. Friday, um, and I've got a session on Friday, but I think it'll be after nine, you know, it'll be like 11 or so. Um, we uh, will talk about more technique and how to play slide cleanly. And then we'll start talking about the theory and the shapes on the neck. And I'm gonna be dealing with mostly standard tuning, eat at Denny's, get bad eggs, okay? Um, if I change tunings, we'll do a special video on that because that will be different licks. And the kind of the nice thing about open tunings, but also just in standard tuning, the licks are completely transposable. And, you know, the thing I tell you not to do, man, we're going to get a lot of sips here. Take another sip. Remember, the thing I tell you not to do uh, when, we're, when we were practicing pentatonic scales was don't do this. Don't be this guy. You 
know, don't be the guy that just, oh, oh, we're, oh, we're in, a, we're over in A chord. Okay, I'll play A minor pentatonic. Oh, we're D. Okay, I'll go up to D. You know, no, try to find that this D minor pentatonic or whatever you're going to use over that D seven chord. Try to find it here. It's right here. So do it like there. Don't, don't move. You know, just don't show off how little you know by just moving around by the chord. Now with slide, I, I kind of feel that's a little bit different. Although I do like, so like you could definitely any lick. But I do like to try to find, uh, and it's difficult. I do like to try to find licks in different chords that are close to each other on slide. So that's where knowing the fretboard can come in handy. So like over the A chord, I might go, I play A and C sharp. Now I want to play A and D, but I can't, they're on two different frets up here. So then I go, I'm playing A and D here, because because with slide, and we're going to talk about this with the, with the, in the coming lessons, you really need to have chords that are straight lines like this. Okay. Uh, Hawaiian steel guys will play diagonally about the cross. You know, they'll use their slide and they'll go diagonal and do like seconds and thirds or thirds that way. Uh, but not so much when you're playing slide this way. Okay. Very difficult. I mean, I've done it. In fact, I did it the other day, but why am I in the E flat? really hard to get it lined up. I mean, I think if I practice it, it's also going to be different at every fret. See, the angle to get from this B to this, that's a really steep angle and with it, you know, maybe that's part of the reason why guys will use the, oops, I got the wrong finger, will use their ring finger. Still not easy. Up here, it's not too bad. Let me go back to my pinky. It's not great. So I, I don't know that I would do that. Like I might go. I might do the notes individually, but not double stops. Double stops are just when you do two notes at a time. That's a double stop. Um, and so I, I don't do a lot of double stops on the slide, but you can like an E. If you're doing uh, parallel mo motion, then uh, you can kind of get away with it. So, all right, I'm missing questions probably. Um, let's see. All right, are people just showing up now for the story time? Yeah, hit that like button, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, that would be awesome. Turn on notifications. Um, sorry about the, but right now I'm only doing three live streams a week. Um, and like I said, revenue is way down, but it's, I, I'm just on my research on it. It's just that, that my, you know, I have all my eggs in one basket. And we all know, especially as an independent contractor, we all know it's bad to have all your eggs in one basket. Um, and basically, there were times where 70% of my revenue was from seven tips for older beginners. Um, and, you know, I, but there were times where I would get 15 to 20,000 views of that in just a two day period. So it actually generated real money. Um, but that's it's getting down into the 1500 views for 30, you know, 2000 views for. So it's it's like less than 50% of my total view count. But because it was almost where all my views were coming from. Uh, with that dropping like that, my my total view counts down, which means my revenues down. So, I you know I've tried to create videos. You know, it's it's catching lightning in a bottle, right? You just don't know. Which, I didn't know that video was going to take off. Like I had no idea. Almost everyone watching right now was introduced to me through that video. Um, and um, hopefully you've gone through my entire catalog because I have a lot of videos. I mean, a lot of videos. If for no other reason than to look back at my different glasses and my different hair. Um, and it would be funny because, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad. Catherine, you put a few pennies in my pocket. Um, I think it's about a third of a penny per view. Something like that. 
So if something's a million views, you're looking at, was that $3,000, something like that. So uh, you see someone has 100 million views and they've no, you know they've made probably about 300 grand. Um, you know, Bieber videos, some of those videos are, well, Drake and th stuff, they're, some of those videos are at a billion. So you're talking real money. Now that's going to a, a company that's getting split all different ways. I get, I get money every quarter from YouTube for uh, music that I have on, the, you know, on YouTube from record companies, stuff like that. So um, that's just part of the royalty system. But yeah, uh, thanks for being here, Kathy. Yeah, uh, let's see. Richard, good to see you. I already said hi to Anthony, so I'm not going to say hi to you again, Anthony. Uh, Hook is here. I just noticed you now. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, so that's so that's where we're at um, slide. And then, um, like I said, I'm not a huge aficionado on this, but I do use it a lot. Um, I probably should study more guys. I think uh, RJ Ronquillo is very good. I think he's got some really good videos. I think he's even got a... Uh, series on slide so if you really get into slide check him out uh, you'll like him much better than me i guarantee it bebo um yeah dance dance monkey hilarious a billion views and here's the thing I, when you get up into that many views too your rate goes up uh they pay a higher rate so you know someone who has a hundred thousand views is not is going to get a little less per spin uh, the other thing, too, once you get that way, you get targeted advertising or you have advertisers paying to advertise on your YouTube. I have, I've been approached um, for that, and I've had um, a friend of mine, the girl that kind of got me started on this, her name is Rachel Talbot. She has a million subscribers, and she uh, said once she got to, I think it was 100,000 subscribers, it may have been less than that, she actually got approached by a third party who would take her royalties, so she wouldn't get the royalties anymore from it. But what they would do is they would get better uh, better advertisers. And so they would take her royalties, but then they would give her 90% of the royalties. They would take 10% or something like that. It worked out something like that. And she ended up doubling her money, like over what she made on a monthly basis doubled overnight. Because uh, they had, you know, instead of being an ad for... Uh, Oh, I don't know, for hair loss or something. I mean, ads are targeted to you. Like you get an ad, sometimes it's targeted to you. Sometimes it's just a generic buyout. You know, they just buy everybody. Um, it depends on the advertiser because you target. Um, but uh, then if you if you're do, if I'm doing a guitar thing, so let's say Fender wants to advertise on my channel, then um, they would they could come to me and approach me, and then I could say, you know, I could have them specifically advertise, but. Um, I can't remember who came to me. It was it was not uh, an advertiser. It was a third party who wanted to get me advertisers, and I just don't want to do that. I like collecting the money myself. It just shows up in my checking account every month. So, Reed, how's it? so we've been doing a slide today. We're just talking about the tools of slide. So just a review. I my new slide that I'm starting to check out is this Pritch and Pipe, and it's brass and tapered. I kind of like it. I used pink my pinky for slide. A lot of great players use the third finger. Uh, Dwayne Allman and um, their trucks, we discovered, use their, their ring finger. Uh, probably my most popular, my favorite slide is just the Corsetan bottle, which is, this is not a real one. This, but this is a thick one. It's a, it's a Dunlop. It's a model uh, 274. Um, and then for for my, in my gig bag, because this is basically non-destroyable, I have a Craftsman 1116 socket, which I chose specifically because of the size. And it's great because uh, it's it's heavier at the tip, which is cool. Um, uh, so you get a little more mass on the bottom strings where the strings are thicker, and they could use that mass. The other thing is you can find these in any city, um, and so and they're cheaper than most slides. Like this, what did I say this was? Four or five bucks, something like that, five something. And this one was eighteen. This one was eighteen sixty two, I think. So yeah, I mean if you're on a budget. Uh, but like I said, you, you can go into a hardware store and just try a bunch of them and find that. This one is, I like, the other thing that's kind of happened is it's gotten rusty in there because of my hand sweat. And that gives it a little bit more of a texture, which is nice because it stays on your hand. I don't know. I like that. So, um, but if you ever break it, they'll replace it, which they, th this, these don't come with a warranty. <laughs> this is probably my third one of these. I've stopped putting these in the gig bag because as soon as I put something on top of the gig bag or somebody else does or it gets crunched between two amps, uh, 
you know, it's gone. This one actually broke. You can see the chip out of it right there. Um, this is a wine bottle one. Uh, I've got three different sizes of th these glass ones. They're all the same thickness, but they're three different lengths, Mama, Baby, and Papa Bear. Uh, there's also these kind that you can use that uh, can, you can spin around so that you don't, you have it, you have a slide, you don't have a slide. You know, you got full range of motion. I, like I said, I have the wrong sleeve on here. It's not very tight on my fingers, so it's kind of loose. I don't like this, I don't like the tone, and it's just in my way. I'm, if I'm playing slide, usually I have a tray uh, near me, like I have stuff on in my mic stand or whatever. I have picks and, and slide on there and capos and stuff. So I can, I can pick up a slide really fast. And I usually use my fingers when I play slide. So we're gonna talk about that. Uh, we're gonna talk about that on Friday, okay? Uh, yeah, uh, Bimo, somebody was telling me about the acidity thing. Uh, I, I, I don't even know how much of that's acidity. We talked about that. I talked about that. Somebody mentioned that about a dietaceous earth, diatomaceous. What is that? My pool guy uses it on our pool filter. So I'm supposed to eat that stuff and it gets it levels out my pH. Um, but I don't mind using elixir strings. Uh, I have a deal with them, so they give me a really good deal. Um, and uh, the... Um, uh, it's not so bad as it was when I was a kid. It's more the sweating. It's just wet water. Um, and then, so this, this, the rust on the inside of my craftsman is probably just water. Any, anybody's sweat would cause that. It's not my specific sweat necessarily. So, um, yeah. And then I even, you know, like there's a really thin glass one that sounds awful. I don't, I think I bought this cause it was, I just need a slide or I thought, Oh, I need a class slide. And it was like crap. It was awful. Don't do it. Uh, and this is a saxophone reed cover. <laughs> and it's a metal version of this, basically. It's super thin. <laughs> super duper thin. And has kind of a nasty sound. In some ways, I mean, that's fine, right? I, it, I don't know how well you can hear that, but it's kind of buzzy and nasty, especially compared to, say, my Craftsman, where it's just, like, really heavy. Now... That's how long that sustains. And I can get it going, keep it going. Whereas with the thin, with this thing, watch me prove, uh, prove myself wrong here. But, yeah, it's dying. Um, so yeah, don't like that. So um, so you can, so by Friday, have something you can use as a slide. Uh, if you have to go to your hardware store, do that. A uh, local music store would be great. Or if you want to order any of the ones, I put a bunch of links there in um, in the chat. So you can scroll through those. I put a link to this, the Craftsman. I put a link to the, this specific one that I use. I put a link to the Pritchin Pipe. So those are my three main slides. Okay. And the, again, the beauty of the of this one live and this one's very heavy though i can feel it on my if i'm doing a lot of slide it kind of hurts in here so be forewarned um but it's i can keep it i can have five of them i can keep one in all the cases or whatever um and uh that really really helps um so oh okay good make sure i get food grade <laughs> Thanks. Because I was going to go out to my pool pump right now. There's some on the ground. I was just going to scoop it up, put it in a glass, and stir it up. <laughs> okay, food grade on earth. That's funny. Yeah, you just visit. Yeah, Bruce, you just go to your workbench. Let me know what size diameter you like. Um, and I could probably go to like a 5 8 I think. No, I wouldn't want to go any smaller. It's perfect. I wouldn't want it too tight, and I wouldn't want it too loose. And the nice thing is, like I said, it's you know the tip is a little heavier. Um, it's like that one. See, this is kind of like that one I had, except this isn't hollow and it's small. But you can see how it's tapered. The one I had was that way, and it was heavier. It was round at the tip. I gotta try to find one. Dang it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know the brand. I don't know anything about it. It was given to me by a friend, and then I loaned it to to uh, Dean Parks and he never gave it back. Actually, I heard, no, he's not retiring, I don't think. It's uh, George Deering that's retiring. Um, the other thing 
you you might want to pick up if you if you've got, all your guitars have really low action, that's going to be a problem for slide because you're going to be hitting a lot of frets. So you might want to set up a guitar. I don't have it in here right now, but for a while there, I had my uh, my Dan Electro because it had such a nice like nasty woody bluesy tone. I set it up and tuned it like Keith Richards. So I tuned it open G, but took off the low E string. So I only had five strings on it. G, D, G, B, D. And it made it real easy to play slide on it. And I raised the action. So the act, in fact, the action is still really high on it. Now I use it for my squishy guitar, which is I basically tune it down uh, two whole steps with light gauge strings. So it's just play, can't, it's impossible to play in tune. Uh, but that's kind of the point. <laughs> yeah, I know that sounds weird, but trust me, there are times where you want a melody that's just like, what's... You know, what is going on? So you need, uh, for certain movies and things like that, I like to have a, a, a guitar that is has super loose strings on it. Um, let's see. Graham Cracker. What? Wait, what? Cooking show, yeah. <laughs> Diatomaceous earth pies. I bet you there's about a thousand recipes. I'm sure there's a channel de dedicated to recipes for diatomaceous earth. It is probably really good for you. I do need to get more vitamin D. I need to lay out in the sun, but we're not getting any sun. It's too smoky now to get sun. It's actually really cooled down. We were supposed to have a high of like 96 yesterday. It only got up to 82 <laughs> because of the smoke and the clouds. It's, it cracks me up. It's like, wow, it didn't even come close. Uh, bring your pasta maker. Yes, next next week you'll need to have a pasta maker. <laughs> okay, so a uh, story. Diane's not here, Mama. Uh, this story actually is about jury duty, and it features my $99 Squire. And if you're wondering how to say my name, by the way, it's Straley. Long A, long E. It's not really supposed to be Straley, but that's how us American morons pronounce it. In German, it would be Schrader. <laughs> so, you have to say it angry like that. And it means beam. Beam. Light beam. Because I'm always smiling. So it's funny how your name... Now, keep in mind, that's not really my last name. My grandfather was adopted by his stepdad. My my dad's dad was adopted by his stepdad. Because name, my last name is actually not Straley. Uh, and I think I, I think it's Friedelbaum. Uh, or Friedel. Friedel for short, but Friedelbaum. Uh, I think, but I'm not 100% sure. I don't know the spelling. I would love to do more research on that. Because uh, it makes it difficult to trace your genealogy when you don't have that information. But anyway, I don't know who knows it. Uh, so, dirt. Um, okay, so the jury duty story. I, I, it's, I hate jury duty. I mean, who doesn't? Who likes it, right? Uh, and it's, you know, when you're self-employed, doing jury duty is... Um, you know, it's just, it's robbing you. Now, back in the day, I got several jury, jury duty stores. Uh, back in the day, you could get out of it if you were self-employed, like it, for financial hardship. People were taking it too, too liberally, taking advantage of it. I wasn't. I was the only one working. My wife was homeschooling. Um, and if I got called to do jury duty, then that would mean that would be all those students I would have to cancel, the gigs, whatever that happened during the day. Um, and so I remember, okay, so here's an axiom to live by. Okay. This is a good, this, this is worth this lesson, right? The whole hour and whatever half that you've been sitting here. Here's the lesson. Okay. I, this was years ago. I got, I got call, I got jury duty and had a phone number on it. So I called the phone number. This was probably in the 80, I'd say early nineties. And um, it actually had a number where I could talk to a human, right? And so I, it was all before the automated voice stuff. So I call and of course you get put on hold and it's the music and all that. And it's, I'm sitting there and I think, I mean, I kid you not, I was on hold for probably 45 minutes, right? Um, you know, you kind of, go, you go through all, it's long enough to go through the stages of grief like five times, <laughs> 
you know, you're like, oh man, oh, yeah, yeah. and then you get to the point where you're like, are you really, are you kidding me? And you're like, then you're like, <laughs> and then you're like, <sighs> and you're like, are you kidding me? And you're like, <laughs> you know, I get all the stages all like, all through five times in 45 minutes. And I literally was, you know, now I had a speaker phone. So I had the phone on speaker and I was probably practicing scales or something, right? Sitting at my desk. I remember exactly sitting at my desk, practicing, I had a guitar in my hand. And about a, mm, five minutes before the lady picked up and took my call, I had a, an amazing uh, revelation. I realized that if I've been on hold for as long as I've been on hold, the person that's being helped right now, the person before me, was also on hold for 45 minutes. Or, and at this point, I didn't know how long I was going to be hold. It could be another 40 minutes. And I thought, you know what? I bet you that person was a complete jerk. Because <laughs> I really wanted to be right then. I was like ready to be a big, complete jerk. And so I decided I was going to go the complete opposite direction. And um, so finally, 45 minutes into this call, I hear on the other side, I hear LA, court, LA County Courthouse, you know, lady saying, you know, I said, ma'am, I am so sorry to bother you. <laughs> That's how I started. And she goes, well, honey, it's all right. <laughs> right away I'm like oh I'm on to something here so I'm like because I'm and I'm really stressed because I'm thinking oh I'm gonna get stuck on some six-week trial we're gonna not be able to pay our rent we're gonna get kicked out of our apartment we're gonna be living on the street you know my head just goes there so she goes how can I help you and I said well ma'am I'm I my wife doesn't work she stays home with our kids and I'm just a guitar player and I I I teach lessons and None of this was untrue. I wasn't lying to her. And I and all of it was true. I said, I I don't know if I can afford to do a jury duty for very long and at all. You know, and she goes, Well, honey, listen to this. <laughs> and she goes, clickety, 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 click. <laughs> and she goes, You know what that was? And I go, No, what what was that? She goes, That's me taking you off the master lift list for five years. Have a blessed day. <laughs> and then she hung up. I made her day. She made my five years. It was freaking amazing. So from now on, anytime I'm on the phone with any city people, I am like, the first thing I say is, I am so sorry to bother you. Remind me how I got a, I get out of speeding tickets because this, this, my stepsister got out of a speeding ticket too. I'll tell that story too. But remind me, that could be a story for next week. Um, and I may not even get to my other, my long jury duty story because we're already at an hour and a half. Uh, but yeah, that was that was one jury duty story I got out of. Now I, I've actually been on. I guess I've just been on one jury, but I've been in pools before where I almost got picked. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's not fun, and especially when you have to go downtown LA, it's like dangerous, and you know you got to drive and deal with traffic, and you got to get there early, and and then it, you're surrounded by morons, you know, and lawyers, which are the same thing. Um, and the, cra the thing that ticked me off so much on this one case that I worked on, the, they, they would take an hour and a half, two hours for lunch, the lawyers and the judges and everybody. I'm like, let's get this over with. Take 30 minutes. What am I going to do for two hours in downtown L.A.? I get my lunch. I'm done in 20 minutes. Uh, you know, now i got to sit around, really? So that, was, that drove me crazy. And then we'd come back from lunch afterwards and they would say, oh, okay, uh, we're going to take, take a recess until tomorrow. Well, why didn't you do that before lunch? So we come back. We're in our jury room. 30 minutes later, they tell us to go home. It's like, oh, I hate that. I just hate it. Um, and they, they always lie. It's a three-day trial. My three-day trial took eight days. So, uh, yeah, yeah, be kidding. Well, I'll tell you, my mine, I discovered the trick accidentally. <laughs> and... Uh, and it's worked for me that time and two other times, maybe a maybe a fourth time. I it all pretty much all of those times that I got out of tickets all predated the two thousand eight collapse of the housing market, and I 
am doing this now as well. I am obeying all traffic laws because I know because of COVID, um, just like because of the crash in the housing market, uh, city financial resources are way down. And so they're looking for extra sources. <laughs> That's where I notice all of a sudden there's everywhere. You'll notice there's, there's uh, uh, construction signs everywhere. You know, next five miles construction. You won't see any construction. They just put the signs up because it's a construction zone. So tickets are automatically doubled in construction zones. So a $500 speeding ticket becomes a $1,000 speeding ticket in LA. And that's just because it's in a construction zone where they're not doing any construction. Uh, almost at that point, you want to fight it because it's like, really? A thousand bucks for going seven miles over the speed limit or whatever. You know, it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, when I was in uh, Missouri, near, uh, uh, in Oklahoma, the speed limit was 75 miles an hour. That was amazing. <laughs> yeah, that giant pickup truck. I was going 90. I didn't even realize how fast I was going in that giant thing. So, uh yeah, yeah, no, you don't want to pay your salary. You'll never work in this town again. I've gotten that. Remind me that story. I'll tell you that story. Oh, gosh. Uh, let's see, Franco. Hey, Bruce, peace to you all. Franco, hello, Tom, hello to all those. I see someone else brought out the diamond Demetrius earth. Yeah, yeah. You just signed in to see and to tell me that. Uh, yeah, I got. I think you were the one that said something on my on the on the uh, on the video. So okay, well my my jury duty story. I got I, I got. I may have to break this up into two parts because uh, it's it's a lot of story. Um, I should do a separate video for this, <laughs> but um, so you know you go to jury duty. You're in the jury room, which is, you know, there's 300 people in there, it's LA, um, and they call your name and you're like, oh, you're hoping to get through the day. If you can get through the day, you're done. If you can get through the day without them calling your name, you're done. And um, so I ended up getting called into a pool. And so there's about, they probably pulled 40 of us into the pool from which they have to choose 12 plus two alternates, so a total of 14. And so they're going through it, and they're, the lawyers for both sides are interviewing it. And it's a train versus freight train versus pedestrian lawsuit. The pedestrian lost. In fact, she was an old grandmother, an old Mexican lady, and she lost half of her foot. The train ran over her foot. Very, very sad story. Um, and so, but the but the her attorney was. A typical like um, uh, ambulance chasing attorney and um, he starts out you know he's interviewing you know everybody gets their name it's like mr. Jones do you like sports and mr. Jones is like uh, yeah goes, do you think sports should be fair sure <laughs> He, he, you know, and then follows on that. He goes, do you think there should be referees in sports? And he went, oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what you are? Oh, you know, you're a referee, but for a try. And it's like, oh my gosh. And then we get to Mr. Smith, Mr. Smith, do you like sports? And I'm sitting next to Smith or Smith. And I'm like, okay, this is a waste of our time. He gets to me, Mr. Straley, do you like sports? Yes. You know, and, <laughs> and then he, <laughs> I was trying to get, okay, right? Now, at this point, you're trying to get them to not choose you, right? The, the, the plaintiff's attorney and the defense attorney, they both get like 10 vetoes, 50. I don't know if it's a set number or if the judge says, okay, I'll give you 20 vetoes. Or 10 vetoes. Let's get this show on the road. Come on. Boom, boom, boom. So, but he, he said, what don't, you know, what, what do you like? What do you do? You know, he's like, he's like, this there's 20 questions for each person working out. Because he's trying to put together a jury that's going to find his favorite. One of the, and he said, what, what do you, what do you like? You know, what do you like? What are your hobbies? What do you like? To, what do you, I think as he said something like, what do you like? And and I said, I know what I don't like. And he goes, what's that? I said, frivolous lawsuits. <laughs> and 
Miami. And they st I still got on the jury. Uh, but I was an alternate, which means I have to sit through everything. And uh, I don't get to vote. And I don't get to be in deliberations. So I'm there the whole time, but I don't, and I don't get to stay home. It's like, no, you, you, you're not, they don't call you in if somebody gets sick. No, you have to be there. Obviously, that makes sense. During a trial, I get that. Uh, it's that way you don't have to get up to speed. Um, well, yeah, Janice, we'll get to that. So um, uh, this is a long story. I may have to. Uh, we'll see if I <laughs> how far I can go. I got coffee, so. How many are watching though? Is it, is it, is, am I losing everybody? Ah, eh, 26. Okay, we're not bad. All right. So, um, so we, so we, they, they seat the jury, they pick the jury, um, and then we get dismissed to the jury chambers, right? Oh no, we're dismissed for the day. And when we come back, they tell us, tomorrow, come back, go to the jury room. Okay, so we go to the jury room. So one day in already, what's supposed to be a three day trial, one day in. We all meet in the jury room. We're all there pretty much, you know, 10, 15 minutes early because you have to be. You can't be late. The lawyers, yeah, we'd show up. We'd be ready to go at 9. And we wouldn't go in there until 11. And then we'd hear an hour of argument, and then we'd break for lunch for two hours. It's like, seriously? it's And, and you know, at one point, the judge came in and said, said thanking us for the serve, our service and everything. Um, in fact, our judge was... He was something. I forget what he, he was pretty a famous judge. I can't remember what, what he did, but anyway, uh, he was great. The judge was great. Um, one of the things though, the jury instructions took a whole day. And this is why I think there should be professional juries. I think per personally, and I know it might create a more liberal jury system, but I think before you can get a law, you can practice law in any state, you have to serve as a professional juror for two years. And you can get paid. They'll pay, you know, 60 grand a year or whatever to be, you know, depending on the state, uh, to be, you have to be on jury. And that way they don't, they can cut out all of that jury, the, the jury rule, you know, the rules, the trial, you know, because they, they all would know that. I think that's what they should do. And in, in, I think in England, they're more like that. So probably why in India they don't have jury, juries. It's, it's done more by judges or professional juries or something like that. So... I, I, we get into the jury room, and I'm completely aware that this is not fun for all of us. And I said to him, I said, hey, okay, tomorrow you bring cookies, you bring blah, blah, blah. You know, I started, like, giving assignments, like, hey, let's do it. You know, hey, I said, here's an idea. They're going to come in here and get us. Let's take all the chairs and put them on the table, and let's build a fort. Let's be under the table. And, like, we have a fort, you know, like our jury room fort. And we were, they were dying. People were loving it. I was an alternate, <laughs> so we, they, they, they call us in, but, but we didn't do it, but they just thought, you know, I was just being, I was joking, we didn't actually do it, but they, they, in other words, I said, let's have some fun here, okay, let's have fun, good, clean fun, we get in the jury room, and they, they say, we have to choose a, a, a foreman, no the, no, the guy comes in, we have to choose a foreman, and they wanted to choose me, but I'm like, I, you can't choose me, I'm an alternate, so I won't be available, and I, I wish they had chosen me, because the trial would have been over in six days instead of eight days had they chosen me. And that is part of the story. So, and I almost got thrown in jail for contempt of court. <laughs> and that wouldn't have happened if I had been, uh, uh, had been in, uh, in, you know, in the deliberations. Uh, so, okay. So we get into the trial and I learned more about inertia than I ever thought I'd know. Um, it was one of the big train companies, Pacific Southern or something like that. Let's say Pacific Southern is the name of the company. Um, yes. And so, uh, Oh yeah, it's, it's, it's really boring uh, for the most part. We're learning about inertia and all this stuff. And, the defense attorney is really cool. He seems very competent. He's, of course, a big business. He's he's either hired by the Pacific Southerners or on staff with them. Um, and he said that the state law is that the what happened was there were four tracks, um, and 
there was uh, a train, there were like a train yard and two of the tracks are commonly used. In fact, one of the tracks was the Metro and then one of the tracks was Frank train. And then the other two tracks were used for storing trains down there or whatever. Okay. Um, and what happened, this lady took the Metro. She had lived across the street from this train track for 20 years. She'd lived there for 20 years. Um, and uh, they, uh, she, had, she had taken the train every day to the grocery store or whatever. And she had come around, and there were several witnesses. We had people from the, that were sitting in cars and things like that that saw what happened. Um, she came around, and they have these big ding, 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 ding that come down on either side of these four tracks. Um, and they didn't have the pedestrian ones. They do now on this. They, even since this happened, they've, in during the trial, they said, yeah, now they have it, which was part of the guilt by association. But that was the city putting those up. That's not Pacific Southern putting those up. So... Uh, so the city went, oh yeah, we should probably put those up. Well then sue the city for not having those there. But what happened was there was a young guy, the train, the freight train was just leaving the yard. So it wasn't even going five miles an hour. All right. And so it was coming and the, of course the things come down, the cars are all stopped. There's cars waiting to turn left and there was a truck sitting there and he could see everything. He was sitting there, a pickup truck. He could see everything and he saw it all go down. And there was a young guy, he ran across in front of the train. And the late, old lady was behind him, and she goes, oh, if he made it, I can make it. She ran across, and she tripped and fell. <laughs> and the train, and her foot was like, I, I'm not exactly sure what happened, but it must. she must have fallen right before the train got there. Uh, or, I mean, why was your foot sitting there? My concern was that maybe she did it on purpose. I know that sounds like no way. No one would do that. Sacrifice a foot for $5 million for your kids? Yeah, I know some 80-year-old people that would do that. Are you kidding me? If they had nothing, my dad probably would have done that. He had nothing when he died. Uh, he always lamented that, you know. Uh, if you knew you could walk halfway, walk away. And, of course, uh, they wanted to show her stump, you know, and uh, the judge ruled that that would have been, uh, would have been um, what's it called, uh, in, a bad influence, uh, not an influence. I can't think of the word, but um, yeah, yeah. I think you get. Um, uh, I think I got fifteen dollars a day, and I actually donated. They give you the option to donate. I donated to the Policeman's Athletic League or something like that. You know, some policeman thing. So it was like ninety dollars. Um, or whatever, eight times 15. Oh, they don't count the first day. They don't pay you for the first day. So it's only every day after that. So it's seven times 15, which is 105 or something. So, uh, and the train not only ran over her foot, but it dragged her until they could stop. And and I learned that it would take you know, a, a train, and it was a freight train. It had 300 cars. Um, and it had, it, you know, they had to calculate, they, the, they know the weight. They, they know all this stuff. So they knew the way. They knew how long it would take to stop. And the poor train driver, he was there. He testified. And he goes, I saw her cross. And he actually said he tried to apply the brakes before she actually crossed because he was worried she was going to try. And sure enough, she did. Um, and that was, of course, the best he could do. Um, and it's, you know, a, a 300-car train freight train going. <laughs> it's going to take... To come to a complete stop, I think it took 550 feet or something like that. It was pretty long, and she was only like 30 feet away from the front of the train when she ran in front of it. Because um, it was moving. And, it, you know, I've, I've been in front of trains. I've, I've stood on train tracks before and when, when I was a kid and stuff like that. And they look like they're going a lot slower than they are, especially straight on. Um, and so it's a little deceptive. So, you know, I, I, don't, I don't blame her for trying. In fact, she would have made it if she'd not fallen. Um, so... <clears throat> yeah, five million would make her life comfy. And that's about what they were suing for. I think they were suing for six million dollars. And the son was there, and the son looked like, or maybe no, I think the grandson was there, and he looked like a total gangbanger, totally tattooed, blah, bald, tattooed, looked like he'd been to prison a couple times. Um and uh so we we sit through all this testimony, and then um we break for, um, I think the, the, the closing arguments, I'm trying to think of anything interesting happened 
Uh, I, what's the, did anybody say that word? Um, oh, interesting, Avito. That's interesting. Um, I think it should have been banned after the OJ trial, <laughs> in my opinion. Uh, let's see. Yeah, pre, 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 just, thank you, BMO. That's exactly right. Pre, pre, prejudicial. It would have been prejudicial to see her foot. We know what happened. We don't need to see it. The, 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 and, of course, keep in mind, this is the attorney that was like, Mr. Straley, you know, do you like sports? So that was his delivery the entire time for four or five days of t testimony. Whenever he was in, Mr. Train Driver, now, do you, blah, 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 have you had a, did you have a drink in the last 80 days before, you know, you know, it was just like just trying to. You know, just trying to set us on edge. And so the train company said um, that the the law was that they couldn't have tr uh, parked trains within 200 feet of an intersection. And they, they, they had two sets of tracks that were parked trains. But, and I'm touching my face so we can take a drink. Right? Oh, man, he was annoying. Um, and so... They had, they had trains parked there, uh, but Pacific Southern's rule is that their personal rule was double the state rule. The state rule is you can't have trains parked within 200 feet of an intersection. The reason is it cuts up back on, on uh, uh, vision, you know, the vision of the driver. Like it, it creates blind spots for the driver. And so but 200 feet is, is far enough. Well, Pacific Southern's rule is 400 feet. They have their own personal rule, 400 feet. Well, they measured it, and the, the trains were like 300 feet away. So they broke their own rule. And the lawyer for Pacific Southern admitted that they broke their own rule, but they still were within 100 feet of the state rule. So they were not in any violation of any state laws at all in this, you know. And so... To me, that was like, okay, that's cool that they at least admitted. They didn't have to admit that they have their own rule. Maybe this attorney, the plaintiff, would have done some research and discovered that. Um, and maybe that would have come up in discovery. But at the same time, it was cool that the Pacific Southern guy admitted. Okay. So let's – I'll flash forward now. We're in – and again, we – the first day. So we did – one day they choose us. The second day we're – in the courtroom, and they're giving us jury instructions. It takes the whole day. And then, and both lawyers have to sit for this. Um, and the plaintiff is sitting there, too. And it's just like, God, this is ridiculous. And then the next day, the jury, the trial starts. So the trial lasted, see, two, two days, and then it was, the trial lasted three days. So it was a three-day trial. But jury deliberation, here's what happened. So if you're ever on jury duty, do, make sure you do this. They didn't. There was something they didn't do that jacked them up. The jury I'm talking about. Okay. So, I, again, remember, I'm an alternate, so I'm not allowed to be in there. I'm not in the jury room. It's just the 12 jurors. I'm not allowed to be in there. So I have to go out in the hallway. Okay, this is the L.A. County Court System. It's This is bare bones everything. So, out, I touch my face. Cheers. So outside the courtroom is this wood bench and a marble wall. And that's my, for eight hours, that's where I'm supposed to hang out. And I'm trying to think, did I have, yeah, we had cell, I had my cell phone back then. So I probably had, I don't know if I had an iPhone. I probably just had a cell phone. So I don't think I had, a, yeah, there was no, I wasn't doing, like, there was no way to, it wasn't like an iPhone. It was not, not a smartphone. It was just texting and calling and that's it. And no reception. So, um, so I, uh, I'm sitting there. I'm just like, oh my gosh! They break for lunch. We go to lunch, hang out. How's it going? Oh, they're saying it's not, it's not going well. But they can't talk to me about it, right? But they're telling me anyway. This is their stuff they're telling me that they're not allowed to tell me. I'm like, really? You guys can't figure it out today? They said, I don't think we're going. We're still on the first question. And, you know, on guilt, the guilt issue. Or is Southern Pacific guilty or innocent? I'm like, and then he said, there's something like eight, ten other questions after that. I'm like, really? And they're, you know, and, and, and he's telling me, oh, this one guy's being a real jerk and whatever. And so I'm like, okay. So we go to lunch, we come back, they're still deliberating. Nope, I got to come back the next day. Okay, 
So I'm thinking, well, if I got to come back the next day, and I'm training in, by the way. I'm not, I didn't drive in. I trained in. So I brought, I'm like, I'm going to bring my cheap guitar. This is my cheap Squire, right? That now I wouldn't take because this thing is, this is my, <laughs> this is my golden ticket. This thing is on a lot of records now. Uh, but at the time, it hadn't been on any records, so it wasn't really. But I took my Squire, put it in a gig bag, and I brought some music to read. Okay? So now imagine this, right? <laughs> I'm sitting there at the bench. I got music out. I'm practicing. Um, I can see the plane, the defense attorney way down the hall. He's sitting over there. I see the defense attorney sitting on the bench across from me. they got to hang out. They're waiting for the jury to decide, too. Uh, the... Plaintiff is not there. The old the grandma is like she's in another room. Maybe they have a room for her to kind of you know like a green room or something like that. Uh, but the the attorneys are waiting to hear because what he'll do is a, the bailiff will come out and say they've come to a conclusion. Come in, then he'll go get his you know uh, the, his client and bring him in, and that's when they read the the thing. So I'm sitting there. I'm playing guitar, and across the hall, giant double doors open. Right. So I'm going to actually model this apparently there was some major trial like some kind of major money like uh, it was a civil trial real estate thing or something right and i'm i don't know i'm practicing the scales um very unusual to see a guy sitting in the hallway at the courthouse in downtown la playing guitar <laughs> not a normal thing right well out of this jury room out of this trial comes these Hot lawyer babes. <laughs> like, I'm like, what's the deal with you? You know, they're like big money lawyers. They've gotten all the surgeries or whatever. I mean, they're hot and they come out and they go, ooh, guitar. Can you play? <laughs> they literally say, do you know any uh, uh, Dave uh, Matthews songs? Um, right away, I know they're party girls. If they say Dave Matthews, I'm like, okay, these are party girls. So I'm like, sure, I play crash. Right? So I start playing crash, and they're like, oh, that's cool, giggly, giggly. You know, that's why I played guitar in the first place, was to meet women or girls. That's how I met my wife. So it's like nothing, you know, this is what it's designed for, right? But that's not why I was sitting there playing. I had no idea there were going to be a bevy of, I don't know what you call a, a group of lawyer babes, a bevy of, a bevy of lawyers. A, you, know what a, you know what a group of rhinos is called? called a crash, a crash of rhinos. And they can run 60 miles an hour. It can only see three feet in front of their face. That's kind of why, I guess. Okay, so I thought that was the end of the scene, right? So the plaintiff's lawyer comes over to me and he, in response to the chicks coming out, the babes coming out. Sorry, ladies, I'm not demeaning them. <laughs> I would worship at their feet. <laughs> but they, he comes to me and says, man, I should have taken up guitar. And I, to which I reply, yeah, you probably should have. And in my head, I finished the sentence by saying, because you're not a very good lawyer. <laughs> that was it. That was it, right? So I didn't notice. I don't know if the defense attorney went through the main door right to my right or if he went through a different door, but about 15 minutes later, the bailiff lady comes out and she comes to me. No, she goes and gets the, the plaintiff attorney and brings him into the courtroom. I, I'm, I'm not even aware of this. I'm like, you know, working on giant steps, you know, and, and then she comes out again and she, and the plaintiff attorney kind of, slinks off and she comes up to me and she goes if you ever talk to an attorney again I'm throwing you in jail that is a violation of the and I'm like what are you talking about I'm like he came to me I didn't go to him he came over and talked to me you're not supposed to talk to him she said I said he said <laughs> I told her what he, I said, I should have taken up guitar. And I said, yeah, you should have. Cause you know, and, she, and, and she's getting all mad at me and I'm getting all mad. Look, why am I even here? I, I they're in there. Just, I'm not, what, why can't I go home? You have to, if you cause any more trouble, I'm putting you in jail. I'm like what? 
<laughs> I was livid. I was ready to go to jail. I'm like, fine. It's got to be more comfortable than a wooden bench and a marble wall, right? I was, I was done. And because this is second day of deliberations now. And, I, you know, that's why I brought my guitar. Okay, so <laughs> crazy, right? Third day, they don't, they, don't, they don't figure it out. Finally, at the end of the second day of deliberations, though, the judge goes in the jury room. And what happened was, and this is, what, this is the lesson you can learn here. If you ever get on jury duty and you, you're, you've got to start deliberating, read all of the questions. Again, this was a civil case. Read all of the questions. Okay, the first question is probably going to be guilty or innocent. Well, they fought about that for two days because there were a couple. See, with the civil case, I think it has to be eight to ten to two or eight to four. I'm not, I can't remember. Uh, learned all that also and forgot it. Fortunately, haven't haven't needed it. Um, and the yeah, it was a it was probably the lawyer trying to get me disqualified. Uh, but it didn't work because he, I didn't. Um, uh, but um, but there must have been more than an, enough people that were saying guilty, that the train company was guilty. And there's a lot of people that are just anti-corporate. So they're going to say guilty no matter what, right? Okay, that that I get. Um, and people are going to be just, they're just, you know, blaming. Oh, it's a little old lady, you know, and they're going to be people sympathetic to that. No, she shouldn't have been crossing the... The things were down, the lights were flashing, the bells were ringing. She had all the signs to not cross. And what happened happened because she was stupid. Okay. But <laughs> the train company, you know, had, uh, so what, what the, the first question is guilt or innocence. So that, they were stuck on that for two days until the judge came in and said, look, here's the deal. You can vote guilt, guilty, and then here's all the amounts. You got punitive damage, you know, blah, 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 damage, blah, 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 blah. blah. You got all these different spots okay this was an, yet another highlight of my life <laughs> having michael thompson confuse me for Ry cooter was a highlight of my life but going back the next day okay so i had to go okay so <laughs> i go home I'm, I'm like i can't believe you know i almost got thrown in jail i go home i'm coming back i got my gig bag on i get on the train i come i train from pasadena to downtown la I got my gig bag on with my music and everything, and I, I've got this guitar, and I get to the door that I came in the day before, and they said, sorry, you cannot bring your guitar into the courthouse. What? I brought one in yesterday. It's not allowed. Since when? It's just not allowed. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, that bailiff? I mean, I'm just sitting there playing I'm not doing, like, what else am I going to do? No, you can't. You know, you can't bring guitar in here. So I went out and I came. I had waited in line to go through the metal detector and everything. So I went in, came out, went around another door. There were three door entrances. No, nope, you cannot bring guitar in here. I'm like, are you kidding me? Now I'm late. And I'm like, okay. So I go around. Finally, I find the side entrance. And the guy says, no, you can't bring guitar in here. Apparently, they all got on the radio and said, there's a guy trying to bring guitar in here. Don't let him. It's like, really? Look at it. It's a guitar. It's not a, I can't do anything. It's like, I'm just doing it to keep it. So, so. So I totally BS the guard. I said, well, I trained here. It's not like I can go to my car and put this in the trunk. I took a train here. What am I supposed to do with this? It's in my gig bag. I said, Eric Clapton gave me this guitar. It's worth $60,000. <laughs> can I give it to you? you know, I said, I gave it to him. I said, can you guys keep an eye on it for me? You know, I was trying to be cool. And... Uh, so they agreed to keep an eye on my $60,000, you know, Stratocaster that was given to me by Eric Clapton. <laughs> so I went up to the, I went up there and within an hour they had reached their conclusion that third day. So I got called in to the, uh, not to the jury room, I got called into the courtroom. And I'm sitting there, me and the other alternate are sitting there and, oh, that too, I think the other alternate got sick. So it was, I was the only alternate. Um, and at this point, I'm serving zero purpose. Um, I'm, you know, if somebody got sick in the jury and they had to leave, I'd go in a deliberation. So I get that. But at this point, if the, they've come to their conclusion, I, why can't I go home? But no, I was so glad I didn't because 
So the first thing the, the judge asks is if you come to your conclusion, the foreman says yes. Did you answer all eight questions? Yes. Okay. And they hand a copy to the bailiff who gives it to the judge. The judge looks at it and goes, okay. So <laughs> this is where it gets really good. How many people do we have watching this? Oh, sorry. Okay. Well, we 25. All right. All right. <laughs> so long story. I told you it was a long story. Um, oh, nice. Retired 20 years now. Wow. Um, so um, the, uh, um, the jury, the foreman stands up and I'm sitting there and I, I don't know what, I don't know what the verdict is. And the jury, the, um, uh, the judge says, uh, what do you, how do you find um, the, the um, defense, you know, guilty or innocent? He said, guilty. And I was like, really? And the, I look over at the plaintiff's attorney. He's like, yes, yes. <laughs> I'm like, oh, man, why did that guy have to win? And then the next question was percentage of guilt. Oh, okay. So this could appease the guy that's the anti-corporate guy that ev all corporations are evil. And, and then the other person that's maybe sympathetic to all grandmothers do no harm or all, all angels. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, weren't there grandmother <laughs> bank robbers? I mean, seriously, you know, now I had great grandmothers, but <laughs> so, uh, they assigned. So what percentage of guilt they said, Oh wait, no, I think that was the last thing. Maybe not. I think, but the, it, regardless, the percentage of guilt, and this would be this would appease, you know, they probably what they did was take a poll, and there were a lot of people who said, no, zero, zero percent of guilt for the train company, zero, zero, zero. And then one guy says, one hundred percent guilt. You know, like I, it's like so you you divide ten by one hundred, one hundred and ten, you get ten percent. They said this percentage of guilt, ten percent. And I didn't even know what that meant. I'm like, oh, that's a weird what percentage of guilt. How do you ascertain? You know, it's like, okay, they came to a number. I'm assuming that's how they came to the number. Like most of the people said, no, the, the train company's not guilty. She walked out in front of the train. And then one person said, oh, 100% guilty. So uh, so then they said, how, how, you know, then punitive damages. Uh, punitive damages would be like, how much should the train company pay because they made a mistake? Like, so it's got to be high enough so that um, high enough so that uh, the train company doesn't do it again. Well, what is it that they did? They followed the rules. They did everything they were supposed to do. They set the punitive damages at zero. <laughs> now I'm looking at the attorney and he's kind of like, he's like, wow, yeah. He's kind of, he heard the 10% and he was like, uh. and then he heard the zero and he's like, well, zero, 10% of zero is, I think that's zero if I'm not and I'm like enjoying this I'm watching him and then they said there were like five other damages it was like zero 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 and they got to uh like medical damage or whatever they said eighty thousand oh I'm like okay so eighty thousand she's gonna get eighty thousand dollars no she gets ten percent of eighty thousand the damages were eighty thousand the guilt multiply that by the guilt it was eight thousand dollars <laughs> this guy got his you know whatever he you know he pro bono or whatever no he didn't do pro bono but he did he probably did a, a what's it called when they they get paid later based on the payout <laughs> so he got they got eight grand he was white as a sheet and the pa the kids were the grandkids were were like really not happy and so we get dismissed. The judge says, the lawyers will be out in the, ch out, out in the hall if you want to talk to him afterwards. Well, <laughs> nobody wanted to talk to the plaintiff lawyer. But a bunch of us wanted to talk to the defense attorney. And he said, he goes, yeah, they didn't know. They didn't know. I've never lost a case, he said. Um, he goes, he says, I, uh, I was a little concerned that it was taking this long. And so this morning, he offered them. I think $500,000. No, he offered him $650,000, I think was the number. He offered him $600,000 cash, just be done with it. 
because he was a little worried that the jury was going to come back with because it was taking so long. That usually means they're trying to figure out the numbers, right? And uh, so um, <laughs> he's an old fart now. Um, so he's thinking, oh, shoot, he's, they're going to award $6 million. And so he's like, oh, I'll, I'll give him six fifty. Six fifty. And it technically, he still wouldn't lose if they get if the train company gets their numbers, um, you know, for the trial. And trust me, it probably cost them six hundred and fifty thousand dollars just to pay this attorney because he probably did six months worth of work getting ready for all the witnesses and all the you know the jury the trial it takes a long time. It's a lot of stuff. So um, he offered him six fifty, and they turned it down. <laughs> they got eight thousand. He offered him six hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And the lawyer turned it down on behalf of the grandmother. And I, I'm talk, we're talking afterwards, and I'm saying, you're kidding. He goes, no. He goes, I thought you guys were coming back with a bigger judgment, so I wanted to get out from behind it and make sure that we didn't pay so much. And I said, that's insane. And he goes, well, we're still gonna, I'm still going to give the old lady $350,000, but we're not going through the lawyer. I'm going to give her over a quarter million um, for her troubles. Um, the problem is, how many times has that happened since? Because the old lady said, hey, I got a $350,000 tax-free for, you know, falling on a train track and being dragged for 80 feet. <laughs> so she was dragged, too. That was the other thing. She was literally dragged by the train, uh, which I just, I, I'm assuming because it was grinding on the, uh, it's not a pretty, I don't, I don't want to know. Uh, but she seemed fine, except for her foot was gone. <laughs> that was it. That's all she lost. So anyway, that was, man, that's my experience with <laughs> almost getting thrown in jail, being on a jury, watching a stupid, frivolous lawsuit attorney, you know, and she probably would have gotten money from the train company anyway, if she hadn't hired a lawyer. Uh, so all of that was for nothing and it wasted 12, 14 people's time. Uh, and I lost income. Uh, and uh, fortunately, I... I was in the middle of this and I got some good gigs that I could do at night because I was already recording by then. So I could do some, some sessions at night. Um, so that is my, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, Bruce, I, I don't even know. I'm, sh I can't imagine he would take one third of the 8,000, but maybe he did. He probably did he was such a douche. I uh, wouldn't be surprised. Um, but that was, yeah, it was glorious and, and painful at the same time. It was, uh, you know, and I just thought it was funny that he came up to me and talked to me and said, man, I should have taken up a guitar. And I'm like, yeah, dude, because you should have because you're an awful attorney. <laughs> and I have a lot of attorneys in my family. OK, keep that in mind. Uh, my stepbrother is an attorney. My cousin, I have cousins that are attorney. My uncle was an attorney and was a federal appellate court judge. He was in the Sixth Circuit appointed by Sixth Circuit. Dang it, I can never remember which circuit. I always say sixth. It's got to be six because I always say sixth circuit court. Boom, 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 boom. Cincinnati. Yep, that's what it was. So my uncle was one below Supreme Court. And for years, um, he, uh, sorry, get my windows ordered here. Um, my uncle was appointed by, um, Gerald, Gerald Ford back in 74. And he went from there, um, cause he was, my, my uncle's from Michigan too. And so I guess they were friends and he appointed the, uh, the, not Supreme Court, but the circuit court. It would have been interesting because if, if, uh, Carter had lost and Ford had won, very likely my uncle could have been appointed to the Supreme Court. Uh, my uncle... Uh, of course, knew a lot of people. Uh, uh, let's see, on the Supreme Court, um, my wife is a big constitutional uh, law buff. She's really into it. In fact, that was what she was going to major in in college. Uh, Supreme Court, wiki. I'm trying to remember uh, if it, let's see, look at past. Past uh, judges, let's see, where would that be? Rehnquist. Um, yeah, so he was friends with, with Rehnquist, 
um, and Rehnquist would come over to their house and and his wife and they would come over to my uncle's house and they would play bridge all the time. <laughs> my wife was like, wait, what? Like, oh yeah, they were here last night. <laughs> it's like, we go to visit them on our way up to Michigan, you know, up to Bentwater and my uncle would go, oh yeah, they were here last night <laughs> playing bridge. And my wife's like, what? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Pretty cool. Um, but let's see. Oh man, I have to move to the Netherlands now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, yeah, and I, I haven't gotten called up for jury duty in a while. Uh, I think the last time I did it, so what, what basically in California is every, every jurisdiction is different. Um, but I, you get, you get called, you know, you have to call in for five days, five days in a row. And now you just log in, you log in more, first thing in the morning. And if they need you, you go down. If you get through all five days and they don't need you, like, it's really good if you get a holiday weekend because usually they're like, now nah, we don't want to do... Right now, everything's really slow because of COVID. Uh, and so uh, probably why they're not arresting rioters. Or, you know, they're not prosecuting rioters because they know that they just be tied up for months, years, um, which is kind of too bad. But um, I imagine right now you're fairly safe from getting put on a trial. Um, but then, so five days... Call in. If you call in in fifth day and you don't get put, you're done. Okay. This is what stinks because then one time I called in, I got to the fifth day and I got asked to come in. I'm like, oh, I almost made it. I almost made it. It was like this close. I was hoping, oh, oh I got called in. And then I got put on a, in a pool and that one I got out of. But the problem was, is that that was a Friday and they didn't, they didn't seat the jury by the end of Friday. Like I didn't get called into it like three o'clock in, in the afternoon, and I'm like, oh shoot! So I had to go back the Monday morning, and I I almost got on trial. Um, I managed to talk my way out of it, and um, <clears throat> I can if you remind me, I can maybe tell you that story. Um, uh, but it took all day, and then finally I I left. So it ended up being six day commitment. Even so, it's really hard because. If you know you got to call in for five days, in any one of those five days, you could go in. It's great if, you're, if you've got a regular job and go to work and you go, okay, I got to call in, you know. But um, but if you uh, and I think now you do it the night before or something, so you know that. that but it's really hard. I, I can't plan. Oh, somebody calls me for a session. I'm like, yeah, I can do it. Maybe I have to let you know that morning, like that. You know, clients don't like to hear that. Yeah, maybe. And then. Then if you get on a trial, you could be in there for two weeks, and it's like, yeah, I may never be able to do this session. So it really is brutally hard. Um, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, Avito, remember those. You're helping me out here. I have a golden record. <laughs> do I have a golden record? I'm. I played on a lot of gold records. Uh, the Bieber record's gold. It's uh, double platinum worldwide, but I don't have any, I don't get those. I, you, I could get the records, but I don't want them. I don't care. We could talk about that another time too. Anyway, so, uh, so Friday, hopefully it probably be a shorter lesson. We're going to talk more about technique today. We just talked about the tools. Uh, Friday, we'll talk more about technique and then, um, we'll, um, uh, and Monday and for, like I said, Friday, I may have a session in, in the late morning to the, through the day. And if that's the case, then we'll make it a short lesson. If not, then I can probably do another story. Um, but Vito, you, you, you want to, since Diane's not able to be here, uh, somebody may want to let her know that she may want to watch story time. So that was a good one. Though. I forgot about that one. It's a good story. And, you know, I, I, a lot of times stories are just in the eye of the beholder. You know, I'm able to tell a story because I'm, I'm looking for humor in things or, whatever, or symbolism or whatever. It's just a part of being a creative person and being a writer. I've written a lot of screenplays and things like that. So, okay, done. Yeah, Vito, you're usually around here, especially you're usually around by the end of the lesson, so you can help me. Jeff, thanks so much. Uh, yeah, and so uh, more technique on Friday, and then we'll start to get into a little bit of theory um, and actual licks and things like that on, on next week, okay? Um, and uh, I think you'll, we'll see, I'll, 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 have some diagrams. Hopefully I'll have the frets, right? Uh, I'll have some diagrams on, um, probably next week that I'm going to throw up, um, for helping you play slide. 
Um, but it's nothing that you don't already know. It's just a matter of looking at things a certain way. And I need you to do that. Okay. All right. Excellent. So, uh, yeah, the cage method will come into play again. Okay. I'll talk to you all later. God bless you. And I'm going to end the stream now.